So how do you say you believe God? But everything you believe him for, you plant it in fear. How are we going to say that, watch this, we believe God, but everything we plant in facts. God said, I need you to put your crazy faith in the atmosphere where it can flourish. Today I got a word, y'all. Um, last week, um, God did something special. <laughs> He really um, purified a lot of our motives. That's what last week was about. Purification of our motives. Why do we want it? Why are we wanting God to do these things? Is this, is this what God wants to do? We talked about our uh, anointed imagination. We talked about um, um, God really purifying the things. But today, um, I want to talk to you in week four of a series we're calling, somebody say, crazier faith. See, some of y'all are like, what happened to crazy faith? I believe that God's taken us to a level where it's the ER in our lives. <laughs> Crazier, healthier. Oh, y'all missed it. Wiser. Somebody say, don't forget the ER. I believe this is the season of the ER. I think we have 80 days or something left in this year. And God's saying, I want you to be healthier. I want you to be wiser. I want you to be, come on. Find the ER. Give me another ER word. What, do we, what does God want for us? Smarter. What'd you say? Happier. Huh? Health. What'd you say? Wealthier. Somebody's, somebody got that. Come on. In the chat, give me an ER that you're believing God for right now. I need somebody to do it. What's another one, huh? Strong. Oh, you know I like that word. What'd you say? Bolder. Come on, give me three more. I feel that thing. Greater. Woo! Somebody needs to feel that. Somebody needs to shout greater. greater. Shout greater. greater. This is the season of the ER. Yeah. And that's why when I came back, we were just going to name this series Crazy Faith. Okay. And God said, no, 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 no. This is the season of Ur. Okay. I, 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 want, I, I want you to add the ER. Because what the ER does is it, is it, it, it acknowledges where you've been but then gives you the expectation of something greater. Uh, and I don't know where you've been okay with being at that status or that standard, but my God is saying ER. Greater, stronger, healthier, <laughs> bolder. There's some ERs that you need to go ahead and ask God, would you, would you allow this to not just be an idea, but would you bring this into my life? Yeah. One of those things for us as a church, it's crazier. Crazier in faith to believe that the promises of God are really true and that they can actually come to pass in my life. And I just know that everybody won't believe. But there's about 15,000, not, it's not everybody watching, but there's about 15,000 people across this nation. Word up to Transformation Nation. There's about, there's about 15,000 people around this nation who have the faith to believe God can do crazier. He can do more than what he's done before. And so today, I want to help you with that, but we got to take it all the way back to the place where your faith resides. Okay. So today, I want to talk about the environment of crazy faith, okay. the habitat of crazy faith, yes. the surroundings of crazy faith, the scene or the setting of your crazy faith, the conditions around your crazy faith. I think I like this word the best, the atmosphere of your crazy faith. What atmosphere are you trying to believe in? Some of us are living in an atmosphere contrary to what we're believing. Many of us are claiming the exact opposite of what we are living in right now. And God's saying you can be in a different situation, 
But if there is any way that you can change the atmosphere of your faith, it is time for you to move to a new address and location. Some of y'all need to move off of certain streets in your belief. You need to move off of the insecurity lane. You need to get off a lying road. You need to be able to move to a place of belief boulevard. You need to be able to get in to an atmosphere of anointing avenue. Some of the address that we've been believing God to meet us at are the wrong addresses. We've been in the wrong atmosphere trying to say, I got faith. And today, I want you to know that certain things can only live and flourish in certain atmospheres. I'm going to say that one more time. Certain things can only live and flourish in certain atmospheres. Let's play a little game real quick. Um, if I said to you, a fish flourishes in the atmosphere of A, a desert, B, a kitchen, or C, water, what would be the correct atmosphere that a fish would flourish in? C, C, some of y'all in water. Now, in, in, in the desert, a fish could flop around, but it wouldn't flourish. In the pan, in the kitchen, some of y'all are like, no, that's where that fish need to be. And put a little lemon on it and saute it. Ah. But you would be flourishing. But the fish would not be flourishing in that kitchen. The only place that the fish could flourish is where? In the water. Okay, let me give you another example. A flower. A flower flourishes in the atmosphere of a vase, the atmosphere of a bouquet, beautiful bouquet, beautiful, gorgeous, or in the atmosphere of soil. Which one is it? Soil. It's sea soil. Yeah. But the only reason it's sea soil is because that's the atmosphere it can grow in. Yeah. It's not the most beautiful atmosphere. The vase is a much more beautiful atmosphere for the flower. Y'all not helping me. The bouquet is a better presentation of the flower. But the only atmosphere that that flower can flourish in is in the soil. What are you trying to say? Some of you have been trying to go after atmospheres that look good and that present well. But God says, I need you to get in the atmosphere that may be a little dirtier or uncomfortable than what you want it to be. But that's the place. Uh, that's the place where you're going to flourish. That's the place where you're going to grow. That's the place where people are going to get to see your full potential. And many people don't understand that it takes being in the right atmosphere to see the fullness of what God placed on the inside of you. One more, one more, one more. Faith flourishes in the atmosphere of A, doubt, B, fear, or C, belief. Which atmosphere does your faith flourish in? See, so how do you say you believe God? But everything you believe him for, you plan it in fear. How are we going to say that, watch this, we believe God, but everything we plant in facts. God said, I need you to put your crazy faith in the atmosphere where it can flourish. And that atmosphere is belief. Write this point down. Crazy faith flourishes in the atmosphere of belief. Say that with me. Crazy faith flourishes in the atmosphere of belief. If we do not get the things that God says to us in an atmosphere of belief, it will not flourish. What if I knew I was called to be a pastor? But when I said that to my family, 
I was in an atmosphere of doubt and pessimism. What that does to what I have faith for. Some of you are paycheck to paycheck right now, but God has birthed a business or a nonprofit or something on the inside of you. And be careful who you say it to. Because if you're in the wrong atmosphere, they will choke out the very thing that's supposed to go and bring them shade. Oh, God. In a, different season, in a different season, what you allow to grow will be the very thing you eat from and bring you shade. But if you kill it in seed form, oh my God. You know that's why they tried to kill every boy under the age of two. Because the best time to kill a king is when it's a kid. And the best time to kill your dream is when it's in seed form. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.